Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of Advanced React WordPress Theme Development. In previous video, we learned about how to add the security headers. And in this video, we're going to learn about how to add the Gutenberg styles on the front end. So let's go to the back end. So currently, as you can see that we have a home page and we have this blocks set up in Gutenberg. You know, we have group block, column block, all of these blocks that you currently see over here are set up. If I check the same page, the home page on the front end that we are fetching, you can see that we don't really see the styles, right? So of course in WordPress environment, if I go to the front end, I'll be able to see these styles uh, because the Gutenberg styles are being applied. But in the headless environment, Next.js has no idea about uh, the Gutenberg styles. So we need to tell it that it needs to include the Gutenberg style. Now, fortunately, we do have a couple of packages that we can use to include the Gutenberg styles, and those are add WordPress block library and add WordPress block styles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to install that package by going on to by going into my front end directory. So I'm going to say npm install add WordPress block library and add WordPress base styles. So let's go ahead and install it. So while this is being installed, we need to go ahead and import all of the size, all of the SAS files uh, that we need. So if you check in the front end, this is my WordPress front end. And if you check in the front end and if you look for Gutenberg and if you search for block, you can see that you have block library CSS and block library theme CSS that has been included, right? So f these are the files that we actually need. So we can import these using those packages so that we have the Gutenberg styles in included. By the way, this is our backend WordPress backend. So these are the styles being included there uh, as part as a part of the theme. So I'm going to go to next year's headless WordPress. And by the way, you can start the repository as well while, while you're here uh, to support my work. And then I'm going to go to front end source and I'll go to styles and then index.scss and I'm just going to use all of these styles. So I'll just copy this and I'm going to go to source styles index.scss and I'm going to paste it here. Right. So we're going to need the colors, variables, mixins, breakpoints, um, Z indexed, and then finally we need these two. So these, this is what we're interested in. So if you compare it with the back end, in the back end, we have the library CSS and theme CSS being included. So we have the block library style.scss, uh, which is for this one. And then we have the theme min SCSS, uh, theme, theme SCSS being included. And if you check the node package, so, so now the package has been installed. And if you go to the node modules, and if you look for at WordPress block, so here it is the package has been installed now. And if you go to block library and you go to source and then you go to, so you, so here it is. So block library source, and then st I'm looking for style.scss and theme.scss. So take a look. So scroll down. Yep. There you go. That's your style.scss. And then we also have the theme.scss, right? So these are the ones that we are including. And of course, uh, these have their dependencies on the colors, variables, mixins, breakpoints, etc. So we have gone ahead and imported that. Okay, so now I'm going to show you the magic. So if I go to the front end now, if I refresh, voila, congratulations. So we can see that uh, our Gutenberg styles are being included now. And we can see that the structure changed immediately. So if I do an inspect element, I'm going to show you that. So take a look. Uh, you've got the WP block columns. Of course, it's coming through the content. Uh, you can see that WP block columns, that's the WordPress Gutenberg styles that's being applied here. And that's coming from the style.css. So notice when I hover over it, what's the URL we get? We get node modules, at WordPress, block library, source columns, style.scss, right? So that's the file being included. So take a look at some of the other things like uh, you have the block column style being applied again, coming from style.scss, your WP block spacer, right? 
So all of these styles that you're seeing is being applied. So if you ask me, that's really powerful because then, so this means that you can go ahead and create the content using Gutenberg in the back end and on the front end, you'll be able to structure and lay out using the Gutenberg styles. Now, if you're wondering why is it that the heading is big over here, but if I look at the front end, it's small. Well, the reason for this is because Tailwind is actually applying its own style. So if you take a look at this one, the heading, Okay, I'm going to go to computed and I'm going to go down and check font size. Uh, so now where is it coming from? If I hover over it, you can see it's coming from the tailwind base dot s uh, dot CSS. Okay, so in case if you want to, you know, go ahead and do your development basis Gutenberg, then, then probably you'll have to configure it accordingly uh, based on your needs and requirements. But uh, just to let you know that, you know, why the why you see the heading size differently and some of the some of the elements differently compared to the Gutenberg. But the good news is that at least we are able to get most of the styles. Of course, there might be some override that you need to do and you need to configure your styles accordingly. But uh, to be honest, at least I'm able to, you know, get the basic layout using Gutenberg styles. All right. In upcoming videos, we will do more interesting stuff. For example, currently the whole content is being fetched using the content, which means it's like a direct dump of the HTML. But there will be times when we would need to insert a form somewhere or probably a custom block or anything like that, where we would need to convert these into components. So for that, we will be using a plugin and that plugin is actually called the WP GraphQL Gutenberg. So in upcoming videos, in future videos, when we are going to do customization, we're going to take advantage of this plugin, which, which is basically going to give us the content in the, and then we can loop through all the blocks and the moment we encounter any specific block like a for example a form block or any custom block then we can use our react component to get the data from the attributes and use our own markup to generate what we are looking for right and if we did that we'll also be able to take advantage of the next year's image component because notice that currently it's all coming from wordpress right so you can see that this whole image that you see over here is not using the next year's image component and of course, it is not really optimized. The file size is like 203 KB, right? If you were using the next year's image comparatively, if I look at the news page where we have the uh, next year's image component, uh, you can see that it's 416 bytes, right? It's pretty low actually, 20 KB, it's a pretty low. So then we'll be able to take advantage of the next year's image component uh, when we parse the block and then these images will also be optimized right so i hope you get the idea by the way i do want to show you the performance report so far based on the progress that we have made so take a look at the inspect element uh, lighthouse and let's generate the report and see how it's looking right now on the live site all right congratulations performance is 100 <laughs> percent Okay, <laughs> I'm sure this is like a dream come true score, isn't it? So I hope you did like the video. If you did, please give a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel if you aren't already. And do star my repository to support my work. Uh, like all the beautiful 173 people have. Do follow me on GitHub. My GitHub handle is Imran H. Sayyad. And do follow me on Twitter as well. My Twitter handle is Cody Tech. All right, I'm going to see you in the next video. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.